Welcome to Aeronet's Visual Simulation Training Program for the Airbus A320. The A320 landing gear supports the aircraft on the ground and includes shock absorbers for landing. The system is electrically controlled and hydraulically operated. That is, there is no direct mechanical linkage between the gear selector and the gear. An emergency extension system extends the gear mechanically if hydraulic or electrical power is lost. The main landing gear wheels have multi-disc carbon brakes using green hydraulic pressure for normal operation and yellow hydraulic pressure through an alternate braking system. The anti-skid and auto brake systems function through the brake system. A parking brake system operates through the yellow hydraulic system to prevent movement of the aircraft when it is parked. The nose wheel steering system is a rack and pinion mechanism utilizing a single actuating cylinder supplied by the green system. It is electrically controlled by the steering hand wheels and the rudder pedals. Controls and indicators for the landing gear, brakes, nose wheel steering, anti-skid, and auto brakes are found on the center instrument panel, pedestal, pilot's pedals, side consoles, and the ECAM display. The landing gear selector lever is located on the center instrument panel. It is used for normal extension and retraction of the landing gear. Just above the landing gear selector lever is the landing gear indicator panel. It indicates whether the gear is up, down, in transit, or in an unsafe condition. The emergency extension handle is located at the aft end of the pedestal and is used to mechanically freefall the landing gear into position. Manual braking is controlled electrically from the pilot's tow brake pedals and automatically from the auto brake panel located on the center instrument panel. The parking brake handle, also located at the aft end of the pedestal, is used to apply the parking brake. Nose wheel steering is accomplished through the pilot's pedals and the nose wheel steering hand wheels, located on the captain's and first officer's side consoles. The anti-skid and nose wheel steering switch, located on the center instrument panel, activates or deactivates the anti-skid and nose wheel steering systems and the normal braking system. The brakes and accumulator pressure indicator is located on the center instrument panel. It indicates the pressure in the yellow brake accumulators and when yellow hydraulic pressure is delivered to the left and right brake systems. The ECAM wheel page is automatically displayed after engine start until the application of takeoff power, after the landing gear is extended until the engines are shut down, and with any associated landing gear, brake, or steering warnings and cautions. 
The eCam wheel page can also be called up at any time with the eCam control panel button located on the pedestal. Two LG CIUs control the sequencing of all landing gear and gear doors. Each controls one complete cycle of the landing gear, then automatically switches over to the other. Switchover also occurs in case of failure of the active LG CIU. The LG CIUs also supply information to landing gear indicators, ECAM, and other aircraft systems. Proximity sensors on the landing gear and landing gear doors give position data to the two LG CIUs. Each LG CIU has its own set of proximity sensors. Additional proximity sensors installed on the shock absorbers send information through the LG CIUs to the other aircraft systems to indicate whether the aircraft is in a ground or flight condition. The green hydraulic system provides the pressure to raise and lower the landing gear and open and close the gear doors. It accomplishes this through door selector valves and gear selector valves, all controlled by an LG CIU. Once the aircraft speed reaches 260 knots, the hydraulic safety valve closes, shutting off hydraulic pressure to the system and remains closed below 260 knots while the gear lever is up. This eliminates the need for a neutral position on the landing gear selector lever. When the landing gear selector lever is moved down, the hydraulic safety valve is opened and an electrical signal is sent to the LG CIU, which in turn controls the sequencing of the landing gear and doors. A safety device prevents movement of the landing gear lever to the up position when the aircraft is on the ground or the nose gear is not centered. There are three doors on each main landing gear, a hydraulically operated main door, a fixed fairing door attached to the main landing gear leg, and a mechanically linked hinged fairing door. The main doors are held closed with an uplock roller assembly. When the landing gear selector lever is moved to the up position, the retraction sequence is as follows. The hydraulically operated main doors open, the landing gear retracts and locks, then all doors close. There are five doors on the nose landing gear, two hydraulically operated main doors, two smaller aft doors, connected by a mechanical linkage to the sides of the nose gear leg, and one small fairing door fixed to the aft side of the nose gear leg. Before the landing gear cycles, the LG CIU receives confirmation of landing gear and door positions from the proximity sensors. As the gear retracts, brakes are automatically applied to the main landing gear to stop wheel spin. As the nose gear lifts off the ground, it is centered by the centering cams and the nose wheel steering hydraulic pressure is cut off. Anti-spin bands in the nose wheel bay stop the nose wheels from spinning. If the normal extension and retraction system is not available, the landing gear can be extended mechanically. When the gravity gear extension crank located on the aft pedestal is pulled out and turned, the green hydraulic supply is shut off. The door uplocks, then the gear uplocks are released by a series of cables, rods, and levers to extend the landing gear by gravity. The landing gear doors stay open. Note, nose wheel steering is not available when the nose gear doors are open. The landing gear indicator panel displays no lights when the landing gear is up and locked, 
Red unlock lights when the gear is in transit or is not locked in the selected position, and green triangles when the landing gear is down and locked. There are two green triangles shown for each landing gear. The forward triangle represents the active LGCIU, while the inactive LGCIU is shown in the background. When they are displayed in green, the gear is down and locked. When the gear is up and locked, triangles are not displayed. When the triangles are displayed in red, it indicates the gear is in transit or is not in the selected position. Amber X's replace a green triangle when an LGCIU has failed. The landing gear door position indicators are green when the hydraulically operated gear doors are up and locked, and amber when in transit or open. Whenever the landing gear selector lever and the position of the landing gear do not agree, the amber landing gear control message appears on the wheel page. This is normal during extension and retraction until the gear is locked in position. When the landing gear is down and locked and an uplock device is engaged in the closed position, the amber uplock message appears on the wheel page. Note, this condition may be observed when maintenance personnel have manually closed the uplock for test purposes. Lower the gear selector lever and watch the gear cycle on the eCam wheel page. Note, the eCam wheel page is not normally visible to the pilots during the extension or retraction sequence. It is automatically displayed only after the gear has extended. The max speed for gear retraction is 220 knots. For gear extension, the max speed is 250 knots and the max altitude is 25,000 feet. The max speed with the gear extended is 280 knots or Mach 0.67. The Brake and Steering Control Unit, or BSCU, controls all functions of the braking system, including normal and alternate braking, anti-skid regulation, auto braking, and brake temperature indication, and monitors the system for failures. The required hydraulic pressure is supplied by the green system. There are two modes of normal operation manual and automatic. Manual braking is controlled with the pilot's rudder pedals and automatic braking is controlled by the auto brake system. In manual mode, the BSCU controls pressure to the brakes in proportion to pedal travel. In auto mode, the selection of auto braking, either low, medium, or max, sets a program to give a set deceleration rate. The auto brake system gives maximum braking in the event of a rejected takeoff when the ground spoilers extend if the air speed is greater than 72 knots. Medium and low settings are normally used for landing. Touch an auto brake push button switch. The on light comes on to indicate all of the arming conditions have been met. The low, medium, and max push-button switches arm the system to program a set deceleration rate. Low orders a programmed deceleration rate beginning four seconds after ground spoiler deployment. Medium orders a greater deceleration rate beginning two seconds after ground spoiler deployment. And max, normally used only for takeoff, 
orders maximum pressure to the brakes as soon as ground spoilers deploy. The green decel light illuminates when the actual aircraft deceleration rate is at least 80% of the programmed rate. The auto brake message appears in green when the auto brake is armed and shows the selected setting, low, medium, or max. It flashes green for 10 seconds after auto brakes are disarmed and appears in amber to indicate a system failure. The anti-skid system compares main wheel speed measured by tachometers on the wheel to the aircraft reference speed and reduces pressure to a wheel brake by closing the anti-skid valve when the wheel speed drops below 0.87 times the aircraft speed. In other words, when a skid is detected, brake pressure is released from that wheel to prevent a lockup. Anti-skid appears in amber on the ECAM wheel page in case of total BSCU failure anti-skid failure, or whenever the anti-skid and nose wheel steering switch is turned off. These green release indicators appear on either side of the wheel number when the landing gear is lowered to indicate that the anti-skid function is ready. Immediately at touchdown they disappear and reappear whenever the anti-skid is active and brake pressure is released to that wheel. The parking brake system is supplied by the yellow system or accumulator pressure. The accumulators have sufficient capacity to hold the brakes on for a minimum of 12 hours. Selecting the park brake on deactivates all other modes and the anti-skid system. To recharge the accumulators on the ground, if the pressure has bled off, turn on the yellow electrical hydraulic pump. The brake temperature system monitors the temperature of each brake. A brake temperature monitor unit, or BTMU, sends the data to the BSCU. Brake temperatures are shown on the ECAM wheel page. When one brake temperature exceeds 100 degrees, a green arc appears above the hottest wheel. The arc becomes amber with an associated ECAM caution when the temperature exceeds 300 degrees. Any other temperature values over 300 degrees will also be displayed in amber. Each main landing gear wheel is equipped with two wear pin indicators which give an indication of brake wear. Fusible plugs are installed, which deflate the tires if an overheat condition occurs to protect the wheel and tire against burst. The maximum brake temperature for takeoff is 300 degrees. Do not set N1 above 75% on both engines with park brake on. If the normal braking system is not available due to a loss of the green hydraulic system or a fault in the normal braking system, control automatically changes to the alternate braking system through the movement of a shuttle valve. Pressing the brake pedals causes the dual valve to open, allowing yellow system pressure to operate a second set of brake pistons. The pressure supplied to the left and right brakes is shown on the brakes and accumulator pressure indicator on the center instrument panel. Auto brake is not available.
Alternate braking without anti-skid is the secondary mode of alternate braking available. The anti-skid may be switched off with the anti-skid and nose wheel steering switch, or may be deactivated because of power failure. Low green and yellow system hydraulic pressure will also deactivate the anti-skid system. In this case, brake pressure is supplied only by a yellow system accumulator. The brakes and accumulator pressure indicator shows the remaining accumulator pressure. At least seven full brake applications are available. The brakes and accumulator pressure indicator must be monitored and brake application pressure must be limited to 1000 PSI to prevent locking the wheels. Auto brake is not available. When the anti-skid and nose wheel steering switch is in the on position and green system pressure is available, anti-skid is available. If green system pressure is not available, yellow system switchover is automatic. Anti-skid is still available through the alternate anti-skid valve. With the anti-skid and nose wheel steering switch in the off position, green system pressure is shut off, anti-skid is deactivated, and yellow system pressure supplies the brakes. Note, nose wheel steering is also deactivated. Alternate brake appears on the ECAM wheel page whenever the braking system has switched to the alternate mode. The nose wheel steering system is controlled by the BSCU and uses green hydraulic system pressure from the nose gear door's closed line to activate the steering cylinder. The captain and first officer steering hand wheels supply the primary inputs to the BSCU. Secondary inputs are supplied by the rudder pedals and autopilot through the primary flight control computers. When the nose gear lifts off the ground, Steering is disabled by the BSCU. Caution! If the captain and first officer move their hand wheels simultaneously, the orders are algebraically summed. Thus, if one hand wheel is moved in one direction and the other hand wheel is moved the same amount in the opposite direction, the nose wheel will not turn. Rudder inputs while a hand wheel is ordering a turn will also have an effect on the amount of the turn. The hand wheels can order a steering angle of up to 75 degrees left or right, the rudder pedals 6 degrees left or right. The steering angle is limited as a function of aircraft speed and the method of steering input. Nose wheel steering is not available from the rudder pedals when the aircraft speed is greater than 130 knots. Nose wheel steering is not available from the hand wheels when aircraft speed is greater than 70 knots. The anti-skid and nose wheel steering switch activates and deactivates the nose wheel steering through the BSCU. A pedal's disconnect button on the steering hand wheel, when pressed, disconnects rudder pedal inputs to the BSCU when it is desired to accomplish a rudder control check on the ground. A towing selector lever on the nose landing gear allows the ground crew to deactivate the steering system for towing and pushback operations. The nose wheel can then be turned through 95 degrees left or right. A nose wheel steering disconnect message appears in green on the upper ECAM ammo display whenever the towing selector lever is engaged. The message turns amber when one engine is running.
The steering message appears when a nose wheel steering fault is detected. During the preliminary cockpit preparation, check that the three green triangles on the landing gear indicator panel are illuminated to indicate that the gear is down and locked. Also check that the landing gear lever is in the down position. The park brake must be applied before checking the brake wear indicators during the exterior inspection. Observe pressures on the brakes and accumulator pressure indicator During the cockpit preparation scan, check that all lights are out on the auto brake panel. Ensure that the anti-skid and nose wheel steering switch is on. When ready to taxi, the captain announces brake check, and with the park brake set, depresses the brake pedals. Holding pedal force, release the park brake and verify that the brake pressures on the brakes and accumulator pressure indicator drop to zero. This is to confirm that the normal green system is operational. If pressure were indicated, it would mean that the green pressure has not taken over and the yellow hydraulic system is still supplying the brakes. Alternatively, the check can be accomplished once the aircraft starts to roll by gently and smoothly applying the brakes and confirming the brake pressures indicate zero. During the taxi check, confirm pedal braking is not being used. Then, select auto brake to max. Confirm the blue on light illuminates and the upper ECAM takeoff memo display indicates max selection. Auto brake max is also indicated on the lower ECAM wheel page. In the event of a rejected takeoff above 72 knots, maximum braking would be applied as soon as the ground spoilers deploy. Limit speed for straight ahead taxi to 25 knots. For turns and slippery conditions, limit speed to 10 knots. Do not ride the brakes. Apply brakes smoothly to reduce taxi speed down to 10 knots. Then, allow the speed to build before applying the brakes again. Straight ahead taxi and small turning orders may be accomplished with the rudder paddles. Up to 75 degrees of turning angle can be ordered by the steering hand wheels. Remember, if the rudder pedals and or the steering hand wheels are used simultaneously, the inputs will be summed. The speed in a turn should be limited to 10 knots. Handwheel control of the nose wheel steering is available only up to 70 knots, while rudder pedal control is available up to 130 knots. In cases of strong crosswind, pilots should be prepared to increase rudder displacement above 130 knots in order to keep the aircraft tracking down the center line of the runway. When the aircraft is established in a positive rate of climb, the pilot flying calls gear up. The pilot not flying verifies a positive rate of climb on the vertical speed indicator and selects the gear up. After the gear retracts, confirm all lights out on the landing gear indicator panel.
prior to the final approach fix, the distance depending on the type of approach flown, select the landing gear down with the landing gear selector lever. After the gear is down and locked, the ECAM wheel page automatically displays on the lower ECAM. Confirm the gear is down and locked by observing the three green triangles on the landing gear indicator panel. Low auto braking is normally used when landing on a bare, dry runway. Use medium for landing on wet or contaminated runways. Max is not normally used for landing. Making an auto brake selection illuminates the on light on the auto brake selector switch and a message appears on the lower ECAM wheel page to indicate the setting selected. At touchdown, the auto brake decel light comes on to indicate that the auto brake is functioning. When it is desired to turn off the auto brake, apply pressure to the foot pedals, normally before 50 knots. This action should be verbalized by the pilot flying as manual braking. The auto brake legend on the ECAM wheel page flashes green for 10 seconds after auto brake disengagement. The hand wheel should not be used until exiting the runway with ground speed less than 25 knots. Monitor brake temperatures on the ECAM wheel page. Heat buildup with carbon brakes is slow and may take some time for temperatures to peak. If the temperature difference between two brakes on the same gear is more than 150 degrees and the temperature of one of those brakes is over 600 degrees, it may indicate a brake that is binding. Stop the aircraft immediately and call for maintenance action. A temperature of less than 60 degrees may indicate brake failure. Upon arriving at the gate or parking position, set the park brake by turning the parking brake handle clockwise to the on position and confirm normal brake pressures on the brakes and accumulator pressure gauge. It is not recommended to set the park brake if at least one brake is more than 200 degrees. This indicates that a shock absorber has not extended after takeoff. It is accompanied by a single chime and This indicates that a shock absorber has not extended after takeoff. It is accompanied by a single chime and the master caution. Observe the 280 knot Mach 0.67 gear extended limitation and continue with the gear down. Clear landing gear by pressing the clear button on the ECAM control panel. If a landing gear does not uplock within 30 seconds after selecting the landing gear lever up, this warning is triggered along with a single chime, the master caution, and the ECAM wheel page. This may be due to the failure of a proximity sensor, so recycling the gear will switch to the other LG CIU and its corresponding set of proximity sensors. Recycle the landing gear by touching the landing gear selector lever.
If unsuccessful, reselect the gear down and leave it down. Touch the landing gear selector lever to lower the gear. The fault message disappears because the gear down indications are normal. However, the status reminder is displayed on the upper eCam. Check the status page by pressing the status button on the eCam control panel. With the gear down, airspeed is limited to 280 knots Mach 0.67. Consider increased drag and fuel consumption. Clear status by pressing the clear button on the eCam control panel. This warning appears if the landing gear extension sequence is not completed within 30 seconds. Recycle the landing gear in order to switch to the other LG CIU. If recycling the gear is unsuccessful, the eCam calls for the gravity extension procedure. However, in this situation, the source of the problem was a faulty proximity sensor. Recycling the landing gear selected the other LG CIU and its set of proximity sensors and restored indications back to normal. Touch the right arrow to continue. The gravity extension procedure is not displayed on the eCam. It can be found in the QRH and FCOM 3. The emergency extension hand crank must be rotated clockwise three turns until the mechanical stop is reached. Touch the hand crank to lower the gear by gravity. Selecting the landing gear lever down will extinguish the unlock lights on the landing gear indicator panel and will minimize the risk of landing gear retraction once on the ground. Landing gear doors will remain open and nose wheel steering will be lost. If gravity gear extension is unsuccessful, refer to the landing with abnormal landing gear procedure in FCOM 3. Touch the landing gear selector lever to extinguish the unlock lights. If a gear door does not close after either retraction or extension of the landing gear, the master caution and eCam wheel page will be displayed along with a single chime. If recycling the gear does not close the door, observe the 250 knot door extended speed limitation. Clear landing gear by pressing the clear button on the eCam control panel. With the landing gear door open, consider increased drag and fuel consumption. Clear status by pressing the clear button on the eCam control panel. A failed LG CIU will be represented by amber X's on the eCam wheel page. Since LG CIU number one supplies the ground proximity warning system, switch it off 
to prevent nuisance warnings on approach. In the unlikely event that both LGCIUs are lost, landing gear control is not available and the landing gear would have to be extended with a gravity extension system. Clear landing gear by pressing the clear button on the ECAM control panel. At touchdown, main landing gear compression sends a signal through the LGCIUs to the corresponding engine fade deck to allow selection of reverse thrust. Therefore, reverse thrust is not available to engine number one when LGCIU one has failed, or to engine number two when LGCIU two has failed. Also, on the ground, while the slats are still extended, only approach idle is available. Clear status by pressing the clear button on the ECAM control panel. If the landing gear is not down and locked when radio altimeter height is less than 750 feet, and engine N1s are less than 75% or the flaps are at 3 or full, this warning is triggered along with the red down arrow on the landing gear selector panel. Simply lower the gear to extinguish the warning. Touch the landing gear selector lever. Touch the right arrow to continue. If the BSCU detects a nose wheel steering fault, the master caution illuminates along with a single chime. The ECAM wheel page displays a steering message. At higher speeds, longitudinal control is available through the rudder. At lower speeds, limited turning may be possible through the use of differential braking. However, nose wheel scrubbing may occur. Stop the aircraft as soon as safe and arrange for a towing vehicle. Clear wheel by pressing the clear button on the ECAM control panel. CAT 3 single only is available. Clear status by pressing the clear button on the ECAM control panel. This indicates a failure of both BSCU channels. It is accompanied by the master caution, single chime, and the ECAM wheel page. Anti-skid is not available, therefore brake application pressure must be limited to 1000 PSI to avoid locking the brakes. The wheel page indicates that due to total BSCU failure, steering and anti-skid are not available and the alternate braking system is now active. Clear brakes by pressing the clear button on the ECAM control panel. Again, brake pressure must be limited to 1000 PSI as observed on the brakes and accumulator pressure indicator. Also, consider increased landing distance. Clear status by pressing the clear button on the ECAM control panel. When at least one brake temperature reaches 300 degrees, this caution is displayed, usually while taxiing after landing or after arriving at the gate. This is due to the slow heat buildup of the carbon brakes. It is not recommended to set the parking brake when the brakes hot message is displayed. Clear brakes by pressing the clear button on the ECAM control panel. With the brakes hot message in flight, the landing gear should be extended, or if already extended, Retraction should be delayed until brake temperatures have decreased. 
In flight, the max speed with the gear extended is 280 knots, Mach 0.67. Before retracting the gear, observe the 220 knot gear retraction limitation. Clear status by pressing the clear button on the ECAM control panel. A failure of the auto brake when armed illuminates the master caution along with a single chime and the ECAM wheel page. This may be due to a failure of the auto brake system itself or to the failure of a wheel tachometer. In case of tachometer failure, one brake is permanently released. Therefore, be prepared to counteract a slight pulling of the aircraft to one side as the brakes are manually applied. Clear brakes by pressing the clear button on the ECAM control panel. Although not mentioned on the status page, consider increasing the landing distance by a factor of 1.2 in the case of wheel tachometer failure. Clear status by pressing the clear button on the ECAM control panel. If the green system normal selector valve fails in the open position, this warning is triggered along with a master caution and a single chime. As long as the anti-skid and nose wheel steering switch is on and the anti-skid system is operative, braking is regulated by the normal anti-skid valves. Clear wheel by pressing the clear button on the ECAM control panel. 